the story of Elijah. Elijah the Tishbite, who lived in Gilead, said to wicked King Ahab, As the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there will be dew nor rain until I say the word. Then the word of God came to Elijah and told him, Get away from here and go east and hide by the little river Kerith. There you shall drink of the little river, and I've commanded ravens to feed you there. So Elijah went and did as God had told him, and lived by the little river Kerith. And the ravens brought him his bread and his meat in the morning, and again bread and meat in the evening, and he drank water from the little river. But after a while that little river dried up, because there was no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah and told him, Go to Zarephath and live there. You'll find I've told a widow woman there to feed you. When Elijah got to the gate of the town of Zarephath, he saw a widow there gathering sticks, and he called to her and asked her, Please fetch me a little water, so that I may have a drink. And as she was going to get it for him, he called after her and said, Please bring me a bit of bread as well. She replied, As your God lives, I don't even have a loaf, but only a handful of flour and a little oil in a jar. And I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, so that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Don't fear. Go and do as you've said, but make me a little cake of it first, and bring it to me, and afterwards make some for yourself and for your son. For the God of Israel, the Lord, has said, The barrel of flour will not be empty, nor the jar of oil run out, until the day when the Lord sends rain upon the earth. She went and did as Elijah told her, and she and Elijah and her family ate of it for many days. So the lesson of that is that we must put God first, even when it seems stupid. Even, even if you get down to your very last little bit of money, or even in her case, food. She put God first, and God blessed her. But after these things, the son of the woman became sick, and his sickness was so bad that there was no breath left in him. And the woman said to Elijah, What have I done to you, man of God? Have you come here to remind me of my sins, and to slay my son? Give me your son, he said to her, and he took him from her arms, and carried him up to the loft where he was living, and laid him upon his own bed. Then he cried to the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, have you brought evil upon this widow with whom I am staying, by slaying her son? Then he stretched himself out upon the child three times, and cried to the Lord, and said, O Lord my God, I beg you, let this child's life come back to him. The Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came to him again, and he breathed. Then Elijah took the child, and brought him down from the loft into the house, and gave him to his mother, and said, See, your child lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know, that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord which you preach is the truth. After many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year of the famine, saying, Go and show yourself to Ahab, and I'll send rain upon the earth. So Elijah went and showed himself to King Ahab. When Ahab saw Elijah, he said to him, Are you the man who troubles Israel? And Elijah replied, It's not me who's troubled Israel, but you and your father's family, by leaving the commandments of the Lord and following Baal, who was an idol. Now send and gather all Israel together to Mount Carmel, and the 450 prophets of Baal, and the 400 prophets of the groves. Because our idol be statue not be nothing as a, a standing still, as not walking, and does have no power, because of the, that's the idol, that's the old statue that's right and they were so stupid that they preferred to believe in these Baal idols than in the true God so Ahab <coughs> sent word to all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets of Baal together at Mount Carmel then Elijah came before all the people and said how long will you keep hopping between two beliefs if the Lord Yahweh is God follow him and if Baal then follow him the people didn't answer a word. Now that's so true that it's either 
that God exists and we must give everything for him, or we give and our lives... we should put God first because he's a power one. That's right. We, we must put God first if he exists. <clears throat> we either serve God or we serve all the stupid idols of the world. And so there's no other choice. There's no third choice. It's just those two choices for God or not for God and if we are for God everything must be for him and Elijah said to the people I alone remain a prophet of Yahweh but the prophets of Baal are 450 men so let them get two young bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves cut it in pieces and put it on the wood but put no fire under it and I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood and put no fire under it you call on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of Yahweh. And may the God that answers with fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, that's good. Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, you prepare your bull first, for there are many of you. Call on the name of your gods, but don't put any fire under it. But they took the bull which they had, prepared it, and from morning until noon, they called on the name of Baal. Oh, Baal, hear us. Oh, Baal, hear us. But there was no answer. They jumped upon the altar that they had made. At noon, at lunchtime, Elijah mocked them and said, Cry louder. If he's really a god, maybe he's talking or he's busy or he's on a journey or maybe he's asleep and you need to wake him up. So they cried louder and cut themselves with knives until the blood gushed out onto their clothes. So when midday was past, they kept on until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no voice. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. All the people gathered around Elijah. Then he walked up to the altar of the Lord, which had been broken down, and took twelve stones to match the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. With the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar. <clears throat> and he put the wood in order, cut the bull in pieces, and put it on the wood. And he asked them to fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the wood and on the animal. And when they did it, he said, do it again. And they did it again. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. The water ran around the altar, and he filled the trench with water too. This was to just show that when the fire came down, there was no way this could have been a trick. It was surrounded, covered with water. And when it was time for the evening sacrifice, Elijah came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and of Jacob, let it be known today that you are the God in Israel and that I am your servant. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you may have their hearts again. Then the fire of God came down and burnt up the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust, licked up the water that was in the, in the trench. And all the people saw it. They fell on their faces and said, Yahweh, he is the God. Yahweh, he is the God. And Elijah said to them, take the prophets of Baal. Don't let one conquering. escape. Because the idols are a conquering. Statues yeah, just concrete, concrete, yeah, statues of stone. So they took the prophets of Baal, and Elijah took them to the little river Kishon and killed them there. And by evening the rains came and the famine was ended. So this is a, a wonderful example of trusting in God and how it all works out. Well, Ahab told his evil wife Jezebel of all that had been done and how he'd killed all the prophets of Baal. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, <clears throat> By this time tomorrow I will take your life, as you took the life of the prophets of Baal. When Elijah heard this, he arose and fled for his life, and went to Beersheba, where he left his servant, and he went a day's journey into the, the desert and sat down under a juniper tree, and he prayed that he might die. So it just shows that although Elijah was so strong, yet just because of the words of one cranky woman, he got so depressed, 
he ran away and wanted to die. So he lay down and slept under the tree, and an angel awoke him, saying, Get up and eat. Elijah saw a cake and a jar of water at his head, so he ate and drank. And again the angel woke him up to eat. Strengthened by that food, he travelled forty days and forty nights until he came to Mount Horeb. He stayed there in a cave, and God's word came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah said, I have really worked hard for you, Yahweh, God of armies, but the children of Israel have left your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword, and only I remain, and they're trying to kill me. God said, Go forth and stand upon the mountain. He did so, and a great wind blew upon the mountain and smashed the rocks. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. When Elijah heard the voice, he wrapped his face in his mantle and stood in the opening of the cave. And the voice said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah repeated himself. He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, but the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets, and I, only I, remain, and they're seeking to kill me. The Lord said to him, Go to Damascus, and anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and anoint Jehu king over Israel, and Elisha is to be anointed as the prophet to take over from you. So I think God was not happy with Elijah, and that's why he replaced him with Elisha. Because Elijah thought that he was the only faithful one. But actually, God told him that there were 7,000 in Israel who had not bowed their knees to Baal. Now we can also think that we are the only one. Poor me, everyone else is no good. And God doesn't like that attitude. Elijah loved, it seemed, the Vazimataz and all the loud things in life. But God tried to show him that it was not through the strong wind or through the mighty earthquake, but through the still, small voice. And so as we quietly read the Bible and hear it to, read to us, we're hearing that still, small voice. Now, in the eyes of the world, it may not be that great and that wonderful, but this is God speaking to us, and that is the way to our salvation.